Noah's tomb and mausoleum, in which the relics of Noah of the Deluge and Noah's Ark, also known as Thefkalion, are located. Now we know that Noah was of the line of Seth, and in the Holy Bible in Genesis it says that his name is means a man of good omen. And of course, uh, very strange happenings as uh, when he was born, he was totally different. He had eyes that looked like the sky. In other words, it could have been blue. But also the fact that in Greek, his name means man of good omen, Thef Kalion, meaning Thef Kam Kalos, meaning good Ionos omen, the man of good omen. And in the um, apocryphal of Moses, Moses tells us that Noah's name in Greek is known as Vefkalion. So Noah was the man of the godly line of Seth. He was selected from among the godless society to build the ark that protected him and his family, all eight people altogether, during the great flood. Though he proved to be godly himself, he was chosen to be the father of the new mankind by the grace of God who revealed to him the plan to destroy the world with the flood. And for at least a hundred years, Noah would work on building a large boat, the ark, in which he was to escape the flood with any who would believe God's warning. He'd been also told to take on all the animals that breathed there except the whales which populated the sea. When he was 600 years old, he and his family, along with the animals and enough food for at least a year, climbed into the ark and prepared for the judgment of God upon the earth. And a little over a year later, they stepped out onto dry land. Noah would live for another 350 years. Now concerning, uh, well, I'll make more on this because it's very interesting. I want you to find out what happened to Ham and uh, why Noah gave such a terrible curse on Ham's son after all this disaster. Now, the mausoleum in which the bones of Noah, or as we know, the Fkalion, are located, the story of the ark, the huge ship that allowed the survival of all kinds of animals around the world, sounds impressive, also incredible. Nevertheless, its builder Noah is one of the most popular biblical figures. And this story has existed for thousands of years, known to billions of people. However, the place of Noah's burial remains unknown. Unfortunately, there's no historical sources other than the religious texts that confirm these facts from biography of Noah. And in addition, dozens of researchers, some more, some less professional, try to prove their own ideas about the possible biography of this legendary man, the blessed man, Noah. One of the most reliable research projects was achieved by a team led by Robert Ballard, and his goal was to explain the biblical flood in a scientific way. Kindly support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. The most famous story says that the famous ark stopped traveling because it landed on the slopes of Mount Ararat, which is now eastern Turkey, but for a long time, of course, belonged to Armenia. The significance of this claim is based on a religious issue, as Islam dominates Turkey, as we know today, and Armenia is associated with Christianity. In addition, one of Noah's possible tombs is located on a disputed territory from Armenia and Azerbaijan. There is a mausoleum located in Nakhchivan on land known as Konagala, which means Old Fortress. Nakhchivan is an enclosed, extremely uh, external enclave of Azerbaijan, 
Many Armenians traditionally believe that this is their territory, but at present it officially belongs to Azerbaijan. The construction of the mausoleum dates back to the 8th century AD, but it could possibly be a little newer. It was rebuilt several times, and now the main building contains the remains of the former building, and inside the burial chamber there is a column, and according to the explanations presented by the guides, this is the place where the relics of Noah of the flood were, uh, was buried. Therefore, it seems to uh, be that even the locals do not see the mausoleum as the original place of Noah's sacrifice, but merely as a temple for a relic store, to store his relics. But could they be? Are they right? Legends are stronger than reality. But beyond Nakchevan, there are other places that claim to have Noah's tomb, his, his remains. The Imam Ali Mosque in Najaf, Iraq, is a place for pilgrimage for millions of people every year. The average number of pilgrims is about 8 million. It's a sacred place for Muslims who follow the Shiite belief, those who accept that Muhammad had an ancestor, Ali ibn Abi Talib, and followers of this belief believe that Ali was buried next to the legendary Adam and Noah. There is also a folklore story in the city of Chizre in Turkey and Karak Nu in Lebanon. Tradition from Chizre, Turkey claims that it was the original burial place of Noah and his family. However, neither the Iraqi nor the Turkish theory can be confirmed. In the case of Lebanon, it's commonly said that it was the remains that were buried in this place. Now, in the mausoleum, are there the relics of Noah or maybe the Fkalionas? Noah's coffin in Chizre, Turkey. The story of Noah's tomb is full of mysteries, and although religious circles believe that they know the real burial place of the legendary Noah, the number of possible points raises many doubts about the truth of the story. Aside from stories from the Middle East and other Muslim countries, there's another legendary site that can add even more confusion. In northwestern Spain, in Galicia, there's a city called Noia. Its name comes from the biblical Noah, and the coat of arms of the city has the image of the famous Ark. Although historians speak with one voice that the legend there has no substance, history remains a popular element of local folklore. Now, what about Noah, Gilgamesh, or Defkalion of the ancient Greeks? As we can see, there are several areas that claim the tomb and the remains of the man who built the ship that was saved from the flood. The story of the flood and the ark, known since antiquity, has become so popular that it's a world-famous myth known to most cultures long before it was repeated as part of the Bible. However, most of the stories relating to Noah are nothing more than oral traditions. The 11th tablet from the Epic of Gilgamesh refers to the myth of the Flood, which draws most of its information from the Epic of Artachasis. There are many elements that are capable of being uh, compared. Uh, comparing the flood on Genesis and the Epic of Gilgamesh. At the same time, there are facts and similarities that can support an identification with the descriptions given by Greek mythology for the flood of Thefkalion, the man of good omen, Noah that is. Pre-flood ancient Greece, what is not known to many people is that at the same time, there are many similar versions and descriptions in many ancient civilizations even in the most geographically distant ones, which all tell a similar story of a great flood, a worldwide flood, a story similar to that of Noah, Thefkalion, or Gilgamesh. Of course, there are several differences, such as where the ships ran aground. In the flood of Thefkalion, when the rains sent by Zeus stopped, the ship of Zephkalion ran aground on the top of Mount Parnassos, or Mount Etna, or Mount Alphos in uh, northern Greece, Halkidiki, or Mount Othris in Thessaly. Genesis reports that this happened on Mount Ararat, 
Ararat in Aramaic means a very high place, up, up high, a very high place, Mount Ararat. So it's reasonable, however, to assume that each people adds to his, his own history, its own place names and many of its own elements of its history. This always on the condition that there was once a flood and a man with his family who survived. So the story was circulated and assimilated into the respective culture. So who could this man have been and what was his family? It's generally claimed that Moses copied or inspired Noah from the epic of Gilgamesh and the flood of Utnapishtim, dating back to earlier times. Other claims cite Nefkalion and Pyrrhus, his wife, as examples because there's so much evidence to suggest that there was a common and universal ancient civilization on the planet, the Greeks. So if everything that is said and perpetuated about the mausoleum in uh, Nachevan, Nachevan of Azerbaijan contains at least a dose of truth as to its content, could they support the hypothesis that there are not the remains of Noah or Noah of Gilgamesh but of Lefkalion? A big question mark that will probably never find the right answer. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.